Most people think laser engraving is a flat operation on the surface of a piece of material, and that's typically what we see. But this is not flat engraving. This is a highly detailed 2.5D relief image carved directly into the surface of a piece of glass. And understanding how to do this completely changes everything you can make or sell. And here's the crazy part. This isn't some trick that you can only achieve with a five-figure industrial laser machine. You can do this today with normal consumer UV lasers. And in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to create real relief engravings using a UV laser on wood or even glass. And you can extend that to other materials. I'll be using the Xtool F2 Ultra UV laser for this because it's a great hobby laser or small business laser. And also because I happen to have it sitting in my shop at the moment. But this technique will work on any UV laser you can get your hands on. But before we dive in, I have a warning for you that the focus setup part of this process is going to be everything on a UV laser. If you get that wrong, none of this is going to work very well, but I'm going to walk you through the complete process to show you how to, how to measure that focus and get it right, as, especially on glass, because that's where it's going to be the trickiest. Before we jump into designing anything or engraving any materials, we need to do a quick setup pass here because relief engraving is a little bit different than normal laser work. At a high level, there are a couple of reasons we can achieve these great relief effects with a UV laser. The first of these is because UV lasers have an extremely small spot size. Typically it's 0.02 millimeters or less. And this provides very precise control over material removal. The second is that UV lasers don't make a lot of heat. This process is called ablation, which I'll try to explain quickly uh, for those who haven't heard this term before. If you think about how CO2 or diode lasers engrave, they essentially use the caveman approach and light up the material with what amounts to a precise flaming torch. By contrast, the ablation process is like a million tiny hammers chipping away at the material. This makes for very clean engraving and uh, practically no heat at all. And hence, there's no charring and it comes at a bit of a cost because it means that the focus here is going to be absolutely critical. If the laser's out of focus by even a millimeter, then the ablation process isn't going to work. Those tiny hammers are gonna miss their mark. And that leads us into the first step here, which is making great reliefs by calibrating the focus accurately. Now, fortunately, a laser like the F2 Ultra UV has autofocus, but not all UV lasers are going to offer this ability, so you might need to do some manual intervention here. For the F2 Ultra UV, we'll start by removing everything from the workspace and hit the auto focus operation in Xtool Studio. The measurement that gets calculated there should be something close to zero millimeters. Next, you can either place your material directly on the workspace or place your uh, cutting plate down first and then put your material on top of that. And we want opaque material here because uh, we don't need transparency. So use something like wood. Measure the height from the bottom of bill plate to the top surface of your material and use digital calipers here because we want to ensure some accuracy. Then go to Xtool Studio and focus again and ensure that the calculated value is reasonably close to the value you measured. It should be within a millimeter, uh, ideally. Now at this point, the blue dot and the red dot on the workspace, if they're not perfectly aligned, you can loosen the screws on the red dot uh, laser and adjust it so that it's perfectly overlapped with the blue dot. Now you should be able to autofocus in the future without having to do all of these measurements because we know it's going to be uh, completely accurate. However, if you're engraving on glass, there's one additional step that we need to do because the autofocus can be fooled by the transparency of the glass. So the simple workaround here is to place a thin piece of paper on top of the glass before hitting that focus button and uh, you'll get the right value. Now that the software here is set up correctly and the focus is dialed in, we can finally move to the fun part, which is to actually create uh, and uh, some relief images and get them out to a piece of material. I'll start with a relatively simple project for the first relief, and that's to do a, an engraving on a piece of wood. And you can use any kind of wood you want, but avoid dark woods and, and woods with harsh grains like oak and favor things like pine or, or maple where the grain is softer and the wood is generally lighter. It just seems to work better with this process. 
The next thing I'm going to need is an image. Now, images for embossment or relief are special. They're not just a flat image. They're things called depth maps. And if you don't know what those are, uh, I did some uh, a, a, quite a few videos on things like coin engraving, where you load up this thing that looks kind of like an X-ray image of this weird grayscale, and you can engrave those. And and in those cases, white pixels are at the surface of the engraving, and black pixels are are as deep as the laser can engrave. And I'm going to to use one of those. Now you can download these things from Google Images or some image source if you do a search for depth maps. You can also go to a tool like Sculpt OK, and I did a video on that a while back, and I'll put a link up here in the corner again. Now, since I have XTool Studio, I'll use that. So I'll click the, this AI button over here, and you'll find a depth map selector there. If you don't, click the embossment uh, up above in the list. And you can do it that way, or you can just say, create me an image as a depth map and, you, and it'll be fine. So I'm going to create this rooster and have it generated. And you can see that XTool Studio created this really nice rooster. And that's the one I'm going to use for the, for the wood embossment. So I'll drop it onto my workspace and then I can scale it and move it around. Now I'll just save that rooster to my clipboard because I need to set up Xtool Studio to do this relief that we want to do. So I'll select the mode that I want, which is embossment. And it's just a case of clicking it. And now Xtool Studio is configured for this. So I'll, I'll paste my rooster back into this project that I have. I, I can then scale it and size it. I'll, I'll make it a little smaller here because I'm not sure where my material is, but I'll capture the workspace and you'll see that piece of wood that I put on over on the laser. Now, I'm also going to focus here, but let me just size and position this rooster to be where I want it. I want it to be pretty much the full height here, which is around, I don't know, it's probably 70 millimeters. It's a couple inches. And uh, let me just position it. And, and we have lots of control here, but you can see this image, as I mentioned, is kind of these this weird x-ray sort of thing of a, of a rooster. Now, as far as settings, I'm going to do 256 passes. And the power uh, I'll set to something close to 190 should be good. And as far as the speed, we can go fairly quickly on wood. So I'm going to pick five or 6,000 millimeters a second. What that speed does is control the depth that you're ultimately going to engrave. So if you go slow, you're going to get something really deep. If you go faster, you'll get uh, still a, an image, but it will be, we'll say, more shallow, closer to the surface. So then all that's left is to shoot this over to the laser. And I'll show you various stages here as we go. So, the, so we're about 25% complete here. Then about halfway through, you can start to see this rooster taking shape. Uh, three quarters of the way again a little deeper a little more refined and the final output here as you can see uh, looks amazing it's it's exactly what you'd you'd want one of the things you can do that's practical with this is if you're maybe a furniture maker and you need to make those those little florette type designs uh, you can certainly use this laser to do that kind of thing without having to spend hours carving if you actually have the ability to carve anything i certainly don't but that's what you could use this for now the second project i want to show you here and i'll just do it really quickly because it's very similar to wood is glass now i'm not talking about engraving uh 3D shapes inside a piece of glass. Uh, you've seen, uh, certainly I've done it, but every time you see a UV laser, that's usually what they show you because it's very cool. But here we're talking about removing actual material from the top surface of the glass. Uh, in this case, a substantial amount of, of material. So I, I generated this rose and uh, I have this old crystal that I was playing with. Now the settings here I mentioned are very similar to, to wood. Uh, in fact, the only real difference here is the speed instead of five or 6,000 millimeters a second, we're going to go 800 to 1,000 because glass is quite a bit harder. After that, I just have to shoot this over to the laser. And again, I'm not going to show you the whole engraving, but here's the first layer and you can see already how deep it is just after the first pass. This is pretty substantial power. About a quarter of the way through, you can see it, it's taking shape. That white dust is, is actually glass dust. So keep in mind, you must ventilate well here. About three quarters of the way through, we're almost finished. You can start to see how deep this actually is. 
And when I look at the final result, it, it's absolutely spectacular. You can clearly see this is a rose. And if I go over to the side here, you can see how deep that actually is. It's about three and a half millimeters and you could easily go deeper if you really wanted to. Now I wanted to show you a practical example of what you can do with this. And I'll put practical in quotes because this is a pretty simple example, but uh, it's a keychain. Now people love keychains and they love their dogs. So I thought, well, I'll put a picture of a dog in a keychain. So in uh, uh, Xtool Studio, I dropped my image of a dog. This is actually a, an image I created from a real photo. And then I put it into Sculpt OK to generate the depth map. And uh, the settings here, we're going to move along. This is 6,500 millimeters a second, and you'll see that even that's pretty deep. Now, I will show you the end-to-end -end engrave here. It's sped up about 250 times. The actual engrave time here was about 25 minutes, and the result isn't bad. It's oak, so it's going to be a bit lumpy in places. And if you want to do a lot of these and you want them to look, I'll say, spectacular, then look for maple keychains. They're out there, and you just have to hunt for them. Now, just before I wrap this video up, I want to show you one more item. And this is a bit of a surprise because what I want to show you is that you don't have to use traditional materials like, like glass or wood. You could use metals and you can use something like stone. And this would be good for pet memorials or garden stones. People love to put these things around their garden. So you can do non-traditional things with these as well. So that's really all there is to relief engraving. You can see you can do multiple materials. The settings don't really change a whole lot except for the speed. And you can use that to control for the actual material you're using, as well as the overall depth you're looking for. Now, this feature has been a, an often requested uh, video uh, from people. So if you're one of those people, hopefully you enjoyed this and you got something out of it. If you did, uh, be sure to hit the thumbs up and also subscribe if you're not already subscribed. I will, since I use the F2 Ultra here, I will put an affiliate link in the description down below. If you're going to buy one of these, you'd help out the channel if you use that. Uh, with that, I'll wind down. I'll say get out there, make your world, and I'll see you next time.